Hello everyone and welcome back to Story Talks. In this video, we'll be chatting to Bori Montipaya about his book, My Girdanji. But first, we have a question from Bowie. Hi Bori, my name's Bowie. In your book, My Girdanji, what is a Girdanji? A Girdanji is a frog and like most things, there are dozens of different names for frogs. And we are the same, same as snakes and crocodiles. There's only one word for crocodile, run! <laughs> so, or swim fast. Um, but I think that when we first did the book, the, you know, the name of the frog, I had to go and see my uncle. Uh, and um, he went through, yes, he went through language with me and we uh, gave me that name. So it means frog. It's frog. He's a little and, frog. Yeah. And I hear frogs were quite popular in your in your family. Right? I was just going to say, I called it Giraganji. My sisters, Chicky and Tony, would call it disgusting, oozy, disgusting, you know, green thing, slime, they'd call it. Oh. Um, and yeah, and I'd give it a kiss just to, just to tease them, you know, and go, I love my frog. So um, um, it was really beautiful. So it became my best friend. And do you know what? Because there's... This is, and didn't your brother keep one on his hat? Oh, my brother Nick was a trickster. I think he got it from mum. And... Um, <laughs> See, there's only two of my sisters who were scared of frogs. The others didn't really matter. Um, so Tony and Chicks were the ones that got, got all my green love from the green frog. Um, and my brother, Nick, and he'd have this big hat on. They'd go, hello, everyone. And he'd take his hat off and there'd be this big, green, fat, green frog sitting on his head and they'd just run, scream, and he'd run up the road, pretended he'd have it in his hat because he'd take it and put it back in the bush and then he'd run along and have green leaves in the, in, in the hat and he'd chase them all for like two days, you know, till they didn't come back, you know. So oh and he'd goodness. be like, they won't be coming back for two days. You know. <laughs> so many tricksters in your family. Mm. Well. Here is My Guru Gunji. It is such a gorgeous book. And I was wondering, where did the idea, I mean, obviously you had your own tree frog as a pet growing up, or several, but where did the idea to actually write the book spring from? Well, football. I know what you're saying, football. You mean soccer? Well, no, Aussie rules. Well, we kick, we kick the footy in Aussie rules. And of course, there's rugby union, rugby league, and soccer, which is football, because they use the foot all the time. But I'm told by, the, by my soccer mate, it's football. But we were watching Essendon and Carlton. I am a Carlton man. Carlton Blues and Essendon. Well, Mimi, my partner at the time, was Essendon. And I had a good mate that played for Essendon as well, back in the day. So it was one wet, cold afternoon in Melbourne, and we were sitting upstairs in this little lofty place. It was an old house, and it used to—that's where all the all the bales of hay were. And they had horses downstairs. It was so cool. I think you could still smell the hay. So. Couldn't hear the horses though. So we're sitting up and we're watching Essendon and Carl. And we're watching, we're having a good time. And Grace, Mimi's daughter, who was only little at the time, said, Hey, Bori, can you give us a story, please? And I said, uh, um, No, look, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the footy. She goes, Football sucks with her hands on her hips. And I said, that's great. Well, I'll watch it for you then. She goes, oh. So anyway, half time came. 
So she must have thought, thank goodness for half time, because now I've got him, because she, once she got hold of something, she just like held on to it. And she go, now I've got him. She jumped up in front of me and said, it's half time, boy. You've got 20 minutes. You can give us a story. So I'm going to mess with her because she was tough. So I said, okay. So I started telling her the story about my frog. So, as you can probably tell, when I do tell a story, I go like for a long journey. So then 20 minutes was up and I just came to the end of the, you know, the first little bit of the story. She goes, Bully, what happens next? I said, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you tomorrow. Uh, so next day comes. So the deal was, so I became the tricky one. I said, I'll give you the next episode or bit of the story just before you go to bed. So she had to do all of her chores around the house. See, I'm like my mum now. I have to do all the chores around the house. Brush your teeth. Do your reading, do whatever, whatever, and be in bed. Okay. So I was outside, Bori, ready. Okay. So I go in, sit in the bed with her, and I give her the next bit of the story. And then I really made it work till it came to the bit where I went, ah, she goes, and 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 then what happened? I said, she goes, oh. Even in the car to school, she'd be talking. So the next night, same again. Buri, ready? Okay, I've come in, sit down, in bed with her. Tell her the next bit. And I go, she go, and then what happened? Tell you tomorrow. And after about four days or four nights, maybe a week even, Mimi kept walking past in the house. And every time she stopped and she'd listen, she'd go, oh. And after a while, she said, Boy, that's a really beautiful story. I think I could do something with that. So then we started working on making it into a book. And now it's a book. Thanks to Grace and football and her pokey nose wanting to know stories. And now it won something, it won an award, it won Book of the Year, I think it did. And, yeah. and I'll let you explain the rest about what's happened to it now. Mm. I love that there is a story as to how the story came about. So many stories going everywhere. Um, well, yeah, Maya Giragunji was indeed the Children's uh, Book Council Book of the Year in 1998. Mm -hmm. Woo, Book mm -hmm. of the Year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then 22 years later, it is still so loved and it's about, it's been turned into a big film. Why do you think this book means so much to people? What's the power to its longevity? I think it's about uh, what we did. I can't tell you what we did that was tricky in the book. We did what really tricky in the book. I can't tell you that you have to work the tricky. You read the book and you tell me what is tricky in the book. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Even grown-ups can't work it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you after when we're off camera so that they don't know. So don't okay. tell them. Okay. Um, so why do people love it? You know, I got, I got a lovely letter from this lady in, um, in Perth and um, Western Australia, and she said, thank you for the book, because her boy was really scared of the dark and he'd always wet the bed. So she picked up the book and she started reading it. And then she would leave the book beside the bedside with the light on low because the young fellow said, her son said, 
mum, could you leave the book here? Okay. So then he would go to sleep. And guess what? He never went to bed again. How good's that? And so, so we go to a young boy, to an older woman. My mum is in hospital getting her eyes done in Townsville. And she's in the ward with this other lady. And <clears throat> she said to my mum, what are you in here for? Mum said, I'm getting my eyes looked at. And the lady said, oh, that's, that's good. And mum said to her, what are you doing in here? She said, well, I can't sleep. I can only sleep for an hour. And then I wake up and I haven't been to sleep for like weeks. And I'm so tired. I don't know why, but the you know, testing to see if everything's okay with me. And I'm sort of, well, I hope it works out for you. Then the lady looked over at my mum's bedside and she saw I had these lots, that she had lots of books on the bedside table. And she said, uh, oh, so you like reading it up? Because mum proudly, she goes, oh, my, my son's a writer. And they're his books. She said, oh, do you mind if I have a look at them? This lady said, mum said, sure. So the lady's looking through and she's looking at maybe tomorrow and, and been, a, been a man and a couple of the other books. And then she perhaps all of them. This looks interesting about a frog. Do you mind if I read this? Mum said, sure. So mum's in and out of the, you know, going down to coming back up and going in and out of the room. And every time she come back, she could hear the lady laughing and 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 slapping her hand because this is so funny I love this book and here she was probably in her 60s and then she goes oh this is really good this is so funny this book you know and it was like oh and then after a while it got really quiet after like half an hour later and mum looked over and she thought oh, she's really quiet now and she had the book like that on her face. Mum said, oh, I hope she's all right. She went to sleep and she was snoring. And she woke up next day at six o'clock in the morning. And mum was up and about. And the lady still had the book on her nose. And she went, oh, I must have dozed off. Mum said, 10 hours. So what, you went to, you were, you were snoring last night at 10 o'clock. She went, oh. Mum said, for someone who can't sleep, you did very well. And you know what she said? She held the book. She said, Kira Ganji, the frog made me feel really safe. That's beautiful. So one stopped wetting the bed and one could go to sleep. Well, when I was reading this the other night, I actually felt the same thing. I had a really nice night's sleep after I'd been reading it. And I, you told me that story about that lady and I could completely understand how she felt. It is a very, very comforting book about finding your inner strength. And I'm going to throw this back to our audience, Rory, and I'm going to give them a little bit of a challenge and that maybe that you could have a think about what helps you stronger, feel stronger and safer and braver. Uh, is it a favourite toy, a blanket, a person, or even a story that you tell to yourself? And think about a time when that thing gave you strength and maybe you could write a description or draw a picture about it. And do you think of your special thing? Do you think your special thing and its story could help others to feel brave and strong, just like the story of my Giragunji? I hope folks watching are able to come up with some beautiful stories about the things that keep them feeling safe and brave. So thank you, Buri, for sharing that with us. But stay tuned for our third stay and tuned. final video where da, Buri da. is going to be telling us a story. And no it might, way. It, I know. Yes, no. way. It's going to be a bit scary. I'm just warning you, but all in the best way. Ooh, so we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.